Others may tell you that he's something in the sky. Uh, the sky. I turned on this evangelist the other night, and it was raining. All the rain coming down on him, and he had to plug his father-in-law. Father-in-law got up and spoke in Chinese. I can't understand Chinese. Then he interpreted for us in, Chi in English. Then he plugged his book. Then he tells this vast audience, 65,000 of them were there, plus the millions who were looking, and I was one of them, and he makes a big pitch for money. This costs an awful lot of money, he says. So let us hear from you. Well, he spent the first 15, 20 minutes on plugging for money, publicizing his father-in-law. The father-in-law takes the mic and publicizes him. So the first 20 minutes went into self-congratulations. Then I turned it off. I couldn't wait any longer. Where's the message? What message is he going to give me concerning Scripture? And I could think of nothing but that word of a George Russell, the great Irish mystic, poet, and painter. And all the priests met in Dublin one year, and he wrote his friend in America. He said, a thousand priests are here to some great convention. And it has started to rain, said A. E. And I do hope the good Lord shows his displeasure and grounds to batter them. <laughs> well, here the rain is coming down on him. And he is telling us how he is suffering in the rain. All the others are under shelter, but he's rough, all right. But he's going to receive fortunes that night for his crusade. And that is called the work of Christ. And he's pointing on the outside to him. He's going to come from some place on the outside. He'll wait forever and never find him until he finds him within himself. And when he finds him, it's his son who reveals him. And his son is David. And David stands before him and calls him Father. Then he will know who the Lord Christ Jesus is. He will know Christ who stands before him, and he will know himself as the Lord Jesus, who is the Lord God Jehovah. Now, only then will he know it. But now you take it and try to feel. I hope you can actually identify yourself with the dreamer. Can you come to some identification with this dreamer? So you not speak of something on the outside creating it, but your own being is creating the dream. The dream of night, and this is the dream of day. For this is just as much a dream. People ask you, never what is a vision? I said, this is a vision. Right now, this is a vision. Oh no, I don't mean that. I mean when you close your eyes and you see something. I said, this is the vision. This is just as much a vision as the vision of the night to me. My visions of the night have cubic reality, just like this, solid, real. This whole vast world is vision. As Blake said to his friend who wondered, what must I do to do what you do, to see as you see? He said, you only have to raise imagination to the point of vision, and the thing is done. But, said he, the nature of visionary fancy or imagination is very little known. People do not know it. They can't be intense about it and raise it to something just like this. It is just like this. This is vision. The whole vast world is vision. And you are the one creating it all. So this is the dream of life. When you're awake and in the dream when you are asleep. And you call that the dream. This is just as much the dream. And if you catch yourself dreaming, your chances are you're going to wake. But if you catch yourself dreaming and re decide not to wake, you can control the dream and make it come out as you want it. The same thing here, if you know this is the dream. You can change the nature of the dream. And so you can simply assume that you are what you would like to be. And that friends of yours are what you would like them to be. And walk in that assumption as though it were true. And to the degree that you are faithful to that assumption, having faith in God, who is your own wonderful human imagination, to that degree, it will externalize itself in your world. Now that is my story to you and to everyone who will listen to it. I would not take back one word or alter one word. 
the whole thing has been explained to me in the depths of my own being. It's been revealed to me. I'm not speculating. I'm not trying to set up any workable philosophy of life. I have no desire to set up a little church. We have too many already. All the little isms run for self-help, really, of the individual who runs them. Not for the help of those who come. It's just a personal little thing of those who set up the little organization. Well, I have no desire to set up any organization. Just to tell it to you in the hope that your memory is good enough to retain it. Now, at least your memory is aided by these things here. If you've forgotten, you can always take the little thing and play it back and then try to refresh your memory. All I ask of you is don't change it. There are those who attempt to change what I've said to make it conform to what they think I ought to have said. No, I say exactly what happened to me, so don't try to change it. As I told a friend tonight, a lady in San Francisco, she thought I should not mention certain things. She was a strict vegetarian and a strict teetotaler. And she altered my script to say that I say a man should be a vegetarian and a teetotaler. Well, I've never said that. I take my martinis every day. I don't do it six days a week and not on Sunday. I have no Sunday. Every day is my Lord's Day. So I take it on Sunday, Saturday, Monday. But every day I have a few martinis before my evening meal. And a nice bottle of wine for my lunch. That and little cheese is my lunch, but a bottle of wine. I thoroughly enjoy it. And she dares to take what I say and then rub it out and put in her own little concept and say, this is what Neville teaches. So I'm asking you one thing. Do not change what I am saying. If you approve or disapprove, leave it just as it is. I am telling you who I know to be God. And I tell you over and over again, God is your own wonderful human imagination. <laughs>